Today on the Rockabilly Arts, we are playing with our new powder coating gun, so stay tuned. An astute observer might say, Gunchy, I was not aware that there was an old powder coating gun in order for you to have a new powder coating gun. Well, yes, yes we do in fact. But I think this requires a slight bit of backstory. So in typical fashion, uh, the shop has gone through some changes recently. One, it is an unmitigated disaster area and it's very little we can do to fix that. But I will have a video update on that soon. Lots of big things coming in. When I say big, I mean, like imagine two and a half times bigger than this. <laughs> we were, uh, we made some changes to the plasma table and we were added some, you know, the new torch and the new uh, cutter itself, which I posted a video about that. Still running into a problem of when the torch head would go by something, it would hit it, knock it off the table, ruin the piece, create scrap. The price of steel is up 400%. So, you know, you really have to kind of judge how much money you're willing to lose in any given moment. So if we bought a torch height controller, thank you, Langmire Systems. God, I was so not looking forward to building one of those. They made one, it's fantastic. Matter of fact, I think um, this is a good time to cut in some footage of that thing actually working. Isn't that cool? I think that's cool. Anyways, so that made things more efficient. However, we had spent a good bit of money on that. So we were looking at our competitors, trying to see like, what, every, what is everybody else doing right now and how can we bolster our business a little bit in the, the sign making and art and bracketry and stuff like that. To which we discovered almost everybody was offering in-house powder cutting, at least the bigger shops. So we, we found an oven uh, that was a good deal. It's absolutely freaking massive. It'll do three feet by three feet by four feet deep at 650 degrees if we so chose. But most of the powders that we use are about 400 degrees. Well, uh, <laughs> one of the problems with powder coating is it's all in the prep work. The actual spraying of the powder isn't as hard as like spraying actual paint, like automotive paint, clear, sanding, all that good stuff. Like the powder coating itself is not bad. It's a little uh, monetarily intense at first, but it's all about the prep work. So we were trying to do some parts. We cut on the plasma table with the new torch head controller, with the new plasma, and the blast cabinet was just not doing it. So we made some upgrades to the cabinet. We had a Harbor Freight cabinet. Uh, it was okay, it did okay, but it was taking forever to make any parts and uh, to get them ready to powder coat. So we upgraded the cabinet. Now, once we got the uh, new cabinet up and running, then uh, we were trying to blast some parts and discovered that the air compressor was running all the time. Like it would just never stop. And then it would just dip below and just keep losing air. So we had to upgrade air compressors to power the new cabinet. So that we can... <laughs> So once we upgraded air compressors, you know, thankfully the air dryer was perfectly adequate, but once the blast cabinet situation was taken care of with the air compressor, we were like, okay, we're in the money now. We're good. Let's start powder coating some stuff. And we were getting fantastic results. As it turns out, because we're all so picky and obsessive and have spent so much time in our you know, respective careers actually working on metal and making things really nice, uh, the prep work was no big deal. Like we already had that down to a, to a science. So we started off with, this is a Redline Easy 50. The Redline Easy 50 is a fine, fine entry level gun. You know, it's kind of the super lower end of like a pro gun, um, if you can even call it that, but it's kind of a step up from the Harbor Freight gun and then above that's the, the Eastwood dual voltage, and then this. So instead of the Eastwood, which these are all very good guns. You can do most everything with those guns. The problem we were running into with this one is uh, the fan powder is not great when you're doing multiple coats of things. And we were powder coating several things that were multiple coats. Um, you know, we could get two or three, but like if you really had to lay on a good powder, a good primer coat, and then you had to lay on a color coat for a base, with a mask on it and then lay another coat on top of that, uh, peel away the mask and then spray it with a clear, you're now up to four coats and this thing just didn't have the guts to do it. So that's where this box comes in. So what's in the box, you may be asking yourself. Well, frankly, I don't remember. Um, I know it is a Cool Coat HD from Columbia Coatings. Now, 
We are not sponsored by anybody ever so far. Now, I'm open to opportunities though, so just get your boy up. Uh, Columbia has been fantastic to us. We have bought a ton of stuff from them, uh, just little stuff like hooks and hangers and you know filters and whatnot. Um, and their powder is is really good. We've got really consistent powder from them. And if I order something on a Tuesday, usually by Thursday, it's sitting at my door. So big ups to Columbia Coatings. Um, so far, we've been using primarily Prismatic and Columbia, uh, but we're thinking about trying out Tiger Drylac. Apparently it's really good. So we've got some hoppers. Why so many? Because once you fill these things up with powder, it's a little easier just to, you know, buy it or just to keep using it. Ooh, that's a, that's a two pounder. Oh yeah, don't you know. What else we got here? Ah, this is awesome. This is a vibration stand. What is a vibration stand, you may be asking yourself. Um, essentially just to agitate powder. So let's say you're spraying something with a metallic in it and you need that metallic to be you know, moving around a good bunch. You don't want it to be sitting down. Now it does pass a lot of air through, right? So like you've got a constant air volume in these things that uh, pump powder, which is nice. I kind of forgot about that too. Uh, hoses, looks like lots of hoses. And, uh, that's interesting. So I assume this is the siphon hose, this big uh, yellow one that looks like you find in a, a you know a heroin user's bag. Um, so I don't know what that's all about. Little paper. Nikki would be happy about that because you know no brown for our compost. All right, this is the money maker. We hope. <laughs> Super excited about this. Ooh, the cool coat HD electrostatic power spray gun. I don't know why that it didn't seem like that dramatic in the moment, but it felt that way. Now, why did we go with this gun? There are many fine guns on the market, and everybody's like, buy the Gima, buy the Gima. I, like, Dude, I, I ain't got Gima money. See previous statement about oven, air compressor, and blast cabinet. And I'll also, in a minute, I'll show you the uh, booth we made with the draft. Um, super cool. Oh, that's a nice. That's a very nice. We got tips. Uh, probably electrodes in here. Yes, there are electrodes in here. Feels nice, actually. That feels like like this. This this doesn't feel very well made. I mean, like again, a lot of people actually consider these disposable because they're like 300, 350 bucks, and if you break them, buying replacement parts is about just as expensive as buying a new one. So, like it, like you can wiggle it, and the whole thing, you can feel it shifting and moving around. The plastic is very thin, but this feels nice. Like it's not metal. I mean, it's, but it's a good, good plastic. And I know I like to post a lot of videos about me screwing stuff up, and I, I usually have no problem doing that, but today I'm not doing that. Um, I'm actually gonna like sit down and read the book before I plug this in and start playing with it. Um, because you know, I wanna do a good job. Uh, so what the first thing that you see me spray is not gonna be the actual first thing I, I spray with this. All right, the control box. Um, so yeah, the, uh, why do we buy the email, blah, blah, blah. Um, there, there's a couple, of, a lot of companies. There's a, um, what's your name? Ali Wang makes a Gima knockoff that apparently is very, very popular. Uh, but a lot of people, and including the YouTube channels that I watch on powder coating, are big on the Columbia stuff. There's a, one of my favorite uh, powder coating channels is Unknown Coatings. College boy. Um, he's using a 20 year old gun from from Columbia that, you know, it's one of the early cool coat series, or it's a hyper smooth or something like that. Uh, also, we've discovered in over our years of buying stuff and building stuff that if there's only a little bit of a difference between like a good one and a great one, get the great one. Buy the bigger table, buy the biggest thing that you can afford because you're going to be mad that you didn't get it in the first place. So the uh, the Cool Coat series, this is the top of the line of those. And there's really not a huge margin between that as far as what they cost. 
Wow, that thing is a unit. Sturdy, actually. Like, all right, so let's see. It's around the front. The metal, of course, it's powder coated. And apparently, they make these in Tennessee. They actually like build them in Tennessee. I don't know where they get their parts from, but they make them there. Uh, this one does not have the um, what do they call it, DPW, um, the digital pulse wave, so that because when you get into tight areas, uh, you'll create a Faraday effect. And so you get these uh, you know, like eddy waves of, of magnetic interference and powder won't stick in those. The way the powder coating basically works is that you're taking powder, you're positively charging it and you're neg negatively grounding the part. So once you spray that powder of you know, positively charged particles at something that has, is the negative to complete the circuit, it just boom, sticks to it. Um, so now, Everybody also says, make sure that your ground is really good. That is the, the number one thing. It's like 3D printing. The first thing everybody tells you when something goes wrong with 3D printing is level the bed, level the bed. <laughs> Literally the first thing anybody will tell you when you're powder coating is make sure that you have a good ground. Well, this is an industrial building and we've checked the grounds everywhere. We actually have incredible grounds, uh, kind of overkill. I mean, we did think about like driving a six foot copper bar into the, the earth and you know regrounding it, but we're really good on ground. Uh, yeah, so, man, this is nice. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I'm gonna plug this thing in and play around a little bit and uh, try and figure out how it works. And then maybe, hopefully, I'll uh, be able to spray something. What we have here is a piece of scrap. I uh, found this over in the plasma pile and uh, put it in the oven for about 45 minutes at 450 degrees, which is 50 degrees hotter than the curing temperature of the powder we're gonna spray on it. And the reason I'm using a piece of scrap for this is literally because I don't care. It's kind of a, just a spray out. So we're gonna hit it with uh, some gloss black. We'll take it to 70% cure, and then we're gonna put a, what's called disco moss over it, which is supposed to be a metallic green. Um, and I have like five pounds of this stuff because most everything that is in the engine compartment of my car is getting done in this color. So what we're gonna do now, we're gonna take this, we're gonna throw it in here. Notice I'm not touching it. Uh, the whole point of the outgas process is to remove any oil from the surface. And since we buy our steel in a condition called pickled and oiled, which is they dip it in an acid to remove the mill scale, and then they oil it to keep it from rusting, you have to cook all the oil off of it. Then, so we'll blast it. We're using uh, Columbia's 10X Media, uh, which leaves a really nice surface uh, that'll give a nice mechanical bond for the powder itself. So yeah, let's get to blasting. This is really fun, actually, especially with this really badass uh, blasting chamber. So yeah. <laughs> Since I completely forgot to video this, what I'm going to hopefully do is splice in some other footage of something else. And again, the astute looker would be like, hey, that's the wrong part. Well, yeah, so this is just a steel piece, right? And uh, as you can see, it started off a disgusting, nasty, rusted piece of crap. And now it is a smooth, not rusted, shiny piece of crap. Uh, so we're gonna blow it off really well because if you have any contaminants in your powder coat, you will see them. As it dries, it'll leave little lumps and it'll be awful. Uh, there are some schools of thought where people will wipe them down with denatured alcohol. That works out pretty well, actually. What you can do with that is you wipe it down and then you throw it back in the oven long enough to cook off any of the fibers and the alcohol that might have gotten on the workpiece. So I'm just going to blow this off, though, because it is just a workpiece.
fresh out of the oven with the disco moss. A little inconsistent. Uh, you know, it's a test panel, and it's literally the second thing I've ever coated with this gun, so I'm not, you know, terribly upset about it. Now, while I was simultaneously doing that, I also was working on this. This is a, a Yeti cup, it's sprayed the same way with the same gun, uh, and it came out really cool. It, it's not a real Yeti cup, it's like the Arctic, whatever, off brand, but yeah, not too shabby. So that's it. Uh, yeah, the Cool Coat HD from Columbia Coatings. Um, also, this is Prismatic Disco Moss over, uh, I think it's Columbia Gloss Black. And uh, so yeah, not bad at all for the first thing and the second thing ever coated with this gun. I am absolutely pleased. The way, it's gonna take a lot more getting used to. The other gun was very much so just spray and pray. Uh, this one, you know, swap out this nozzle, adjust this TV, you know, change your air pressure. I mean, I'll get all that stuff done, which is why I wasn't talking about it while doing it, is because I don't know. <laughs> Um, you know, we got pretty good with the other guns. I could tell you, you know, it's like, all right, well, I shot the first coat with this. I shot the second coat with the setting of this with this much air pressure. But you know, it was so wildly inconsistent, and, and certain powders would flow a lot differently. But this seems to flow really well. And bam, metal flake, yo. Oh, well, that's it. Thank you guys for watching. Gaji. So remember, drive fast, take chances, and safety third. Good night.